In this lesson, I'll show you how to set up your first check. So let's open Check Builder Pro, go to the File menu, and select New. This gives us the template chooser. We have several different templates you can choose from. Uh, business check templates, personal check, and deposit slips. Also, just so you know, each of our check templates also includes uh, a deposit slip. What you want to do is be careful to look at each screen preview and read the description so that you select the, the template that's appropriate for your check. Uh, let's start off. Let's choose the check template uh, QB, which is our QuickBook style. And so we'll just click Choose. And then it'll prompt us for a name. After you give it a name, uh, it will ask you if you want to get info from an existing check. Uh, since this is your first check, we'll click no. But just so you know, for the future, you can make a new check and transfer the name, address, uh, account, routing numbers from a previous check. Also, there's no saving in Check Builder Pro. Uh, your check is automatically saved when you make changes, when you print, etc. Now what you want to do is get out an existing check uh, that you've been using. We'll call that the reference check. And we'll use that to get information and then enter that into Check Builder Pro. So basically, you have four different areas on a check. You've got your address, the bank address, the uh, fractional routing number, and the micro line, which is that row of funny numbers and symbols at the bottom of the check. That consists of the routing number, account number, and the check number. So when you open up the check, it's got a placeholder graphic, placeholder text, etc. We'll start here on the Your Info tab. To begin, we'll hit the Clear button, clear out the placeholder text. Now we'll enter our data. You can tab through each one of the areas. You don't have to click your mouse. After you've entered your information, click the Transfer to Check button and your information is entered into the check. Now we'll go to the Bank Info tab, hit Clear. And again, click the Transfer to Check button. Now we'll go to the Bank Numbers tab, and the first thing that we'll do is enter the fractional routing number. Here are two typical examples of the style and location of the fractional routing number, usually in the top right-hand corner of the check. For demonstration purposes, we'll leave the bank routing number with all zeros. The bank routing number is enclosed by what's called the routing transit symbol, and is always followed by the account number which typically has an on us symbol at the end. Some checks, typically business checks, have the check number at the beginning of the micro line, and usually personal style checks have it at the end. There are some checks that have it in the middle, and our personal style check templates allow you to put it in the middle or the end. Currently, our business checks only allow the check number to be entered at the beginning of the line. When you do enter your routing number, it will check to make sure it's a valid number. So now we'll enter our account number. Uh, any spaces that you see between the routing number and the account number will need to be entered into this field here. There's a lot of variation that we can't account for, and so you'll have to uh, take care of that yourself. So we'll type a space. And then there's a symbol at the end that uh, typically is called an on us symbol. And uh, usually it'll occur once or possibly twice in the account number usually at the end, and you get that special symbol by typing the letter O. There is a legend down here that uh, will remind you of that. If there's any dashes uh, in the number, you get that by typing a dash, although the dash that's entered is, uh, looks a little bit funny. So we'll type the letter O, and uh, finally we'll enter our beginning check number, which we can change later if we need to, and click Transfer to Check. It will format the micro line up here, uh, and check for any mistakes. We'll go to the Fonts tab next. And here you have uh, listed with radio buttons the various areas of the check. 
and then the font menu, size menu, etc. over here uh, to apply those to those various areas. So this first one, uh, your address font that pertains to your name and address. Let's um, get that. It applies the font. Let's maybe make it a little bit bigger. Um, there's a, a couple of settings here. You can make all those lines the same size uh, of a couple of other uh, common formats. Uh, we'll make it so that uh, line one is a little bit larger than the rest of the lines. So we'll select that one there. And we'll keep it aligned to the left. Um, you can adjust the spacing here up and down. As I click these buttons, you'll notice the line spacing here will change. And we'll do that just so you can see what that looks like. Usually the line spacing on checks is very tight. So you can tweak that to your liking. Next, we'll go over here to the bank address. And we're going to select the same font for that one. You don't want to get too carried away with fonts on your check. And you don't want to use something that's too frilly or hard to read. That's the whole point is for it to be legible. So be careful with that. Now we'll change the check fonts. That's for the titles, the pay to, the order of, date, etc. Those are all changed in this setting. There's a font that I like for that. Um, you can do all caps or you can do initial cap. With that font, all caps looks a little bit funny, so we'll go to initial cap. Uh, we're going to make the size a little bit bigger. You can also make the, the P in uh, pay larger, as you'll see on some checks. So we'll click that option. You can see that's starting to look pretty nice. The next section is the payee fonts. That's when it fills in the name, amount, and all that kind of stuff. Um, we'll go ahead and leave that set on that setting. And then finally, for business voucher checks, you can uh, change the font on that. Uh, you might have to experiment a little bit to make sure that the font and the size you pick uh, will allow everything to fit in. If you use split transactions a lot with lots of categories, you want to be careful that you don't use too big of a font or it may run out of room. That looks good. The next thing we're going to move to is the graphics tab. Here we have a section for a personal logo, bank logo, you can insert a scan signature if you want to, and you can insert a background if you have the appropriate kind of check paper in order to do that. If you uncheck these settings, you'll have the option to uh, just hide the graphic or uh, you can delete the graphic. We're going to switch off the bank logo. We don't need that. We are going to use a personal logo. And there's two ways to get that in here. You can click the personal logo button. Use the standard file navigation box to locate where your graphic is located. Or you can just simply drag and drop the graphic onto the button. And that's what we'll do. So we'll grab our logo up here. I'm going to take it down here. And I'm going to drop it onto that button and let go. You can see it placed it onto the check here. You'll notice that there's a grid in the background here. That, that won't print, but that helps you to line things up as you're designing your check. Usually graphics that aren't square or rectangular are, when, are inside what's called a bounding box. And you can see that white bounding box here. And you don't need to worry about that because white doesn't print. So even though it covers up the, the uh, grid here, we don't have to worry about it printing funny unless uh, you insert a background and that's a different matter. We're going to move this around just a little bit. You can see I'm able to position the various elements of the check by simply clicking and dragging them. There's a couple of guidelines there that help me to get things right. Also, I think I'm going to go back to the um, font tab. And uh, for the bank address, we're going to use a center justification. And we'll get that placed where we want it. There's a control here. You'll um, When you do a test print, um, depending on your printer, uh, the lines may be too light or too dark uh, if you're printing lines. And you can use this control here. You can watch as I slide this. I'll make the lines get darker or lighter. So you'll have to determine that for yourself. Okay, next we're going to go to the Layout tab. And there's some more options for us here. Some options only apply to business checks and some to all checks. Uh, you can see there's an option here to show check lines. That's handy if you're going to hand fill a check. Uh, maybe not so good if you're going to use either our software to complete the check or other software. So we're going to turn that off. 
Also, if you're going to print a business address to use a window envelope and mail a check, it's kind of tight between uh, this and the memo area. And so we're going to, in this case, switch off the memo and give the address a little bit more room. Because this is a business check, we can select the option to have two signature lines. And you can also change the text that appears under the line. So we'll change that to two signatures required. There's also the option of inserting a special message into the check. There's some pre-configured messages or you can enter your own. We'll select void after 90 days. And we'll move that up here on the check to give it just a little bit more room. Okay, so that pretty much completes our check. We will need to do some test prints and make sure that things are lining up. I do want to touch briefly uh, on the fact that each of our check templates includes a deposit slip. If you want to set that up, uh, click this button here. And you have the same series of uh, tab buttons here to go through and enter the information. If you want to, you can copy it from the check. Most deposit slips are not incremented, but you can certainly set it up to do that if you need to. You will need to decide based on how you're going to print this, whether the perforations will be at three and a half or three and two thirds. You have the same adjustment for the tab stops and there is a control to adjust the lightness or darkness of each of the deposit boxes. Then you go back to the check screen. We just click there. So one last thing, uh, if you want to set this check to be your default opening check, just go to preferences, click the select button, and that will set this as the startup check. I'll show you how that works. So now when we open Check Builder Pro, that check will automatically open rather than giving the open check dialog. And that's it.